guys. How's it going? Okay. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's see what we can do about these, uh, these guys and these guys and some of these guys. So I decided that I want to use all of them. I don't want to limit myself to just one or the other. It doesn't, you know, that's not my style. Um, so <clears throat> I, um, yeah, so I want to, I'll show you what my idea is. Okay. First of all, I've got this, this bag full. I told you I sorted out my paper scraps the other day. And so this is all little scraps and I'm like determined that I'm going to use them. You know, I suppose anything that, you know, didn't have anything at all interesting on it. Uh, I did, I did throw those away, but so this is just all book pages and ledger pages and all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. And what I've decided to do is I'm just going to collage all of this stuff on a big piece of craft paper. I'm not going to do it on, uh, I want this to be relatively lightweight because I'd like to be able to use it on other things. So, you know, the cereal boxes are great because they're nice and sturdy and, you know, they can make covers and all that. But something like this, I can collage paper onto it and then I could attach pieces of this to other things, you know, like to tags or to, you know, make pockets out of it or whatever. And it doesn't have to be extremely, you know, durable. So, well, I mean, it will be, but you know what I mean? Anyway, so, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take these little, little scraps and I'm thinking I might not even tear them. Like I'm going to try to just use them the way they are, you know, um, because when you start tearing stuff, when you start tearing stuff up, you just make more scraps, right? So, oh my gosh, this thing is a mess. Um, I hate when you go over the edge of the, the paper and so anyway, and then you get those little slices of glue. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And I decided, yeah, I'm not going to even tear any of these pieces. I'm just going to use them the way they are. And, um, you know, not make more scraps. Okay. I need to turn that down a little bit. One thing I will say about these, uh, Blick glue sticks is that they're kind of soft. So I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's not all of them. It might just be some of them that are kind of soft, but it seems like they all kind of are, but that's okay. I just kind of have to be careful, you know, or I wind up with these globs of glue underneath things. So anyway, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna literally take these pieces and stick them down on top of each other very, very randomly without tearing any of it. And I do want to try to get all the way up to the edges because I don't want to be wasting the edge of the paper. Um, know what I'm saying? So this might take a while, but, <clears throat> but that's okay. I am okay. I have some questions from people and I can't, <laughs> I can't remember. I need to always write that stuff down and I, and I just don't, I forget. I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah, somebody asked me about, about those glue sticks and I don't really, I th oh, they were asking me if there was a particular reason that I stopped using the Amazon ones and the answer was no, not necessarily. And I, I don't have anything against the Amazon ones. I just, uh, 
wanted something a little less expensive maybe even i mean those there's they're not expensive anyways but i thought you know if i could if i could get more for my money then i wanted to try to do that anyway so i i have a funny story you guys um i i've been ordering groceries from instacart and if anybody does not know what Instacart is, Instacart is uh, in your area, wherever you live, there are certain stores that are on this app. It's an app that you can download on your phone. And <clears throat> based on your zip code, stores will have their... You can shop at all of these stores on on the app. So whatever stores are on there, you can use. And you find a and then and then there's people that are sort of like Uber drivers or whatever, and they um they sign up as shoppers, and so they see an order come in and they they grab it and they go, okay, so I'll go do that and I'll get your groceries or whatever. Anyway, so it's kind of random who, whoever it is that gets your stuff for you. But if you go like, so in, in Spokane, there's like maybe 12 different stores that, that have signed up for the service. And, um, so like Costco is on there and, um, Petco and there's this, uh, Fred Meyer. So it's like a, you know, grocery store chain and, um, Albertson, Safeway, you know, Rite Aid. And, um, anyway, so one of them is like a food service store, kind of like URM or something, you know, and, um, <clears throat> really more geared towards restaurants than, than, uh, Costco is. But anyway, <laughs> So I used to have a food truck a long time ago. And so I kind of got used to going there anyway. So I wanted to make a cheesecake. And so I was so tempted to tear this piece just then. So I wanted to make a cheesecake because why not, you know? And um, so I was on the, the food service website or, you know, shopping app section and uh, Instacart section and they had a pack of three one pound packs of cream cheese for six dollars and I think it was 79 cents and so I was like cool that's perfect you know because this particular recipe that we like to make it's called the heavy one and if you've never made like a New York style style che cheesecake check google that recipe because it's amazing Anyway, so it takes, but it takes two and a half pounds of cream cheese. So that's five packs of cream cheese. Anyway, so the guy brings the groceries and I have him just drop them off out in the front by the, by the front door. And, uh, <laughs> the cream cheese that he wound up bringing me was not three one pound packages. It was 10 three pound packages of cream cheese. And it came all in one box, but it was still the $6 and 79 cents. That's what they charged me for it. Not 379 times 10, like I, on the receipt, it was actually like seven bucks. So something was wrong. Anyway, obviously they weren't going to take the cream cheese back. Um, you know, especially with all of the COVID stuff going on, right? So anyway, so I've got all this cream cheese and you know, what the heck, what am I going to do with all this cream cheese? So that's why I decided to make a cheesecake. Well, I doubled the recipe for the heavy one. And then I remembered that I had gotten rid of, um, a couple of my spring form pans and I used to have like four or five of them and I got rid of a few of them. Cause I used to have like a real small one and then, you know, different sizes. And I had two of the big 10 inch ones 
and I thought I'm never going to need two of these at one time. So I got rid of a bunch of stuff. And, um, anyway, so I wound up doing, um, one, I had one box of graham crackers. Thank God I have a lot. I have tons of butter. So, so that was good and lots of sugar. So, um, I made the three crusts were uh, the one package of graham crackers, which is three, three, three packages into enough graham cracker, you know, it's like graham, crushed up graham crackers and sugar and butter. And that's your crust. So anyway, I wound up doing a, a big like pie plate one and then the big giant 10 inch spring form one. And then I still had lots of filling left over and I had a little bit of the, of the crust mixture. And so I just took, oh, oh, and I also got rid of all my uh, muffin tins for some, I think cause they were just all beat up and they're, I'd had them for so long and I'm kind of, I'm kind of in this phase right now where it's like, I want new stuff. <laughs> like I, I just want like new kitchen, kitchenware, you know? Anyway, <clears throat> but I, but I did have a bunch of cupcake, um, papers. So I just put a bunch of cupcake, I doubled the papers and put them in a baking dish and then just filled the bottom of the, of the muffin cup with, um, with the graham cracker stuff. And then, you know, just, just did like little mini ones and, um, yeah, it turned out really good. It, if you do decide to do that, um, the recipe tells you to, um, to preheat the oven. This is for the 10 inch cake. Okay. The recipe says to preheat the oven to 475 and bake it for 15 minutes. Um, and then turn the oven down and bake it for an hour at 200. Well, I've done it that way before and the crust kind of winds up burning. Like I've had the crust burn doing that, you know, um, you do have to be careful and keep it in the center of the oven. Like you don't want it on, on a rack where it's like in the bottom section of the oven. You want it like up in the middle. And they also say to add, um, to put a tray of water in the, in the oven with it. And I've done that too. Um, but it, to prevent it from cracking, but I don't do that. What I do is, and this, and I'm telling you, it is like foolproof and it works every time. Um, I preheat the oven to 400 and I put the cake in, I let it get to that temperature. I put the, I put the pan on a cookie sheet though, because the butter that's in the, um, the graham cracker crust, it will leak out underneath the, the spring form like collar, you know, anyway, so I just started at 400 and then as soon as I turn the, as soon as I put the cake in the oven, I turn the oven down to 250 and I bake it at 250 for an hour and a half and it comes out absolutely perfect every single time. So I'm just saying, sometimes the recipes aren't, aren't exactly, aren't exactly foolproof, but I mean, maybe it works for, for them. I don't know. But anyways, so give it a try. Give, give that recipe a try. You can find it. I, I maybe I can link it in the description. Um, it's a really, really good cheesecake recipe. It's only got, uh, three tablespoons of flour in it. And then it's like five egg yolk or five eggs um, plus two yolks and a quarter cup of heavy cream, um, <laughs> a cup and three quarters of sugar and yeah, a pound and a half of, or a two and a half pounds of uh, cream cheese. I think that's, oh, and then lemon zest. It's also got lemon zest in it. I didn't have any lemons. Um, so instead of lemon zest, I actually added some lime juice. I had lime juice in the fridge. 
so but that it turned out really good it turned out really good anyway give it a try it's a good recipe i've been making that cheesecake recipe for the longest time it was uh i might as well talk to you guys while i'm doing this right um that recipe came from a book called the joy of cheesecake and that i i had um when i was a kid my my parents split up when i was like a baby i was like nine months old or something and um my dad was gay and that was one of the reasons that they split up but um <laughs> anyway and my mom knew he was when they got together it wasn't like that was the reason they split up but it, it did become a problem after a while but anyways um so so i lived with my dad until i was about four years old and then and then um they agreed that i should that i i should live with my mom for some reason so <clears throat> um so my mom got custody of me when I was about three and a half or four, I think. Anyway, but I didn't see my dad. She got married again. And then I didn't see my dad until I was about 11 years old. And when, and he lived in Denver at the time and I was living with my mom in Oregon and uh, in Lincoln city, Oregon. And, um, so some, at some point he got in touch with my mom and said, you know, I want to see her. And, um, so they, they put me on an airplane and I flew to Denver to see him. It was the first time I'd ever been on an airplane and I really wanted to take him a present. And that was the present that I took him was that cookbook, um, the joy of cheesecake. And it's really cool because I still have the cookbook. Actually, I gave it to my son, to my oldest son. And, uh, and it still says, you know, to daddy and stuff in it. But it's the best, it's the best cheesecake recipe, I'm telling you. It's called the heavy one. Anyway, and then, um, yeah, I still have cheesecake filling left over. <laughs> so, so I ordered some muffin tins on Amazon. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. So if you try the, um. If you try doing it with the muffin tin, like just the muffin, you know, papers or whatever. Um, I did the same exact thing when I baked those, except for I took them out after 25 minutes and they were done and they were perfect. Um, and then the pie, the one that I did in the pie plate, um, instead of baking it for an hour and a half, I baked it for an hour and it was done. It was about like that. Thick. the the 10 inch pan was about that thick so anywho if you're locked up in the house and you're not allowed to go hang out with all your friends you might as well make cheesecake right so see this is just all coming together um how long has this been 18 minutes not too bad so excuse me, my plan is to cover this whole thing with paper and then this is just going to be kind of like a collage base, like a base for some images that I'm going to put in these little guys. And I think this should be enough to do, to do all of those. I'm hoping. And you know what I'm thinking? I might just do like a few of these pages like this and just try to use up this whole pile of little scraps, you know? And then I'll have just like this really cool like scrapbook paper that I can use for all kinds of stuff. So if you decide to do this, I would like to hear about it. And I haven't, I have, I, I told you guys, I'm really bad about Facebook, but oh, that page, that page just like totally fell apart. Um, has anybody posted this little project in junk journal connections? If you have, will you please 
share a link to your thread in the description. Um, and then we can start like sharing our, it's not my group, right? Like I always think about it like that. Like it's not my group. It's, it's a group that I started, but it's, it's everybody's group that's in there. You know what I mean? Anyway, so that would be fun. I would really like to see what you guys are doing and what you're, you know, if you're playing along, um, I want to see. So if nobody has made a post or started a thread or whatever on Facebook, then I will, I will do, I will go and do it and I'll link it in the description on this video, but, um, I'll add it to all of the videos in this little series. So, cause I think that would be super fun. And you know what? I, I've had lots and lots of people over the last couple years that have sent me pictures you know, emailed pictures to me of things that they've done in journals that they bought for me or, you know, things that they, um, that they made inspired by, you know, one of my projects or something. And I just love it. I just think it's the coolest thing. It's like, it just really makes me proud and it makes me really, really happy. So if anybody ever gets a idea to Oh, I can't tear this. Okay. <laughs> See, I almost tore it. I'm just going to put it right there. Um, if you guys ever want to share images or, you know, if you ever just want to, I don't know. I mean, if you ever want my advice about something or, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty open to, to talking to you. So, um, just, just reach out, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to respond sometimes to emails, but you know, I usually will. I usually will, especially if it's something like that, you know, where somebody's reaching out to me and saying, you know, I, I just want you to see this or, um, you know, bearing their, Kind of like bearing their soul to me or whatever. I'm I'm proud to to do that. So don't make me regret it. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But I have had people send me pictures of journals that they've that they've made, um, and one recently. Um, it was a guy actually, which I thought was super cool. And he made one of the little, um, the little mini lap books and he made it for his mom, which I thought was so cool. And he made a video. I should I, I need to ask him if he minds, if I share it. Um, and if he doesn't mind, then I'll share the video and, um, or maybe if he's in my Facebook group, I'll ask him to, to post it. If he hasn't already, like I said, I, I'm not very good about Facebook. I don't know what it is about Facebook. I just get overwhelmed. It's like I get sucked into it and then I can't get out of it, you know? And then before you know it, I've been on Facebook for three hours. So I sort of avoid it a little bit intentionally. Okay, so this is covered. Um, the whole thing. Whoops, there's one little spot. One little naked spot. Um, so, I'm just going to leave it to dry. And hopefully, by the time I'm ready to use it here in a little bit, hopefully it'll be dry. There's another naked spot, but that's okay. Okay, so it'll dry pretty quick, right? Um, let me put this stuff back in the bag. It just seems like I hardly used any of it. You know, I could probably cover 10 of those pages with this. And I wanted to use this stuff instead of using those, those collage bases because I used a lot of them, actually the ones that I printed off so I could show them to you guys. Um, 
but I just, you know, I want to use my scraps. So that was kind of the whole point to this whole thing, right? Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint these. I'm going to paint them all black and let me find something to put under there. I'm going to paint them all black and then, and then I'm not going to paint the, um, whoops, this thing's clogged up. I'm not going to paint the slide frames. I mean the, the like actual slide frames, but I am going to paint these and I'm going to do them all black and then I'm going to do like I did on this, on these and then, um, you know, kind of like make them like metallic. So I'm, whoops, wrong side. Yeah. Wrong side. So if you're, if you would like to do this and you want to play along with this little project, then I'm using, this is the paper I'm using actually. It's the Strathmore watercolor paper. Uh, it's cold press 300 series. Okay. So you want to use the, the textured side, like the actual, like, um, upside on the paper, not the back so that you have the texture. And I try to make sure that I get all of the edges too. And I've done this with other colors of paint, but honestly it works. I think it works the best with black. And then and then we'll go back um, and use some like metallic paints and stuff. Actually, I'm going to use the Inca Gold. And um, so I kind of like to just do it while it's down here on the board. And that way I for sure get the edges and my fingers are going to get covered with paint, but that's okay. So if I do like that, then I most certainly will get you know, the edges, right? And this is just super cheap, um, acrylic paint. It's like, yeah, Apple Barrel. I think that's Walmart. I think that's from Walmart. It's like $1.99 or something. And this is a, it dries matte. It's not a glossy, uh, finish or anything. Hey, Bastion, Hello. you want to, um, Check that rice. It's the my timer's gonna go off here in one second. See if it looks like it's done. Anyway, so yeah, so I just paint these black. Not quite. Okay. I'll, I'll do 10 more minutes. Do you, can you remember, come back maybe? Or I can take it out, I guess. But. I'm going to bed. Huh? I'm going to bed. Oh, you're going to bed? Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> I got to take the rice out in 10 minutes, you guys. So I'm just trying to keep doing some of these while these are drying. They should dry pretty fast though. Um, and then we can just do some fun little, so what, then what I'll do is I'll take that, um, that page that I just collaged and I'm going to measure the size that I need to go behind these. And I think it's going to be okay if my background image goes over those holes because I can just punch those holes again with the crocodile, you know. And I'm going to use some eyelets on these corners or uh, I might use... Um, 
I might use some brads too. I'm not sure, but, but yeah, so I'm just covering them. Okay. So let's let a couple of those dry. Let me try to get the paint off my hands. Um, so I'm going to paint all of these. And so, you know, that'll take a while, right? Um, hang on, hold the phone. I'm trying to keep this whole project all in one place, all in one container. I'm actually trying to keep the whole project in here. Okay. So let me let these dry. along with the collage. <clears throat> then I do want to use some of these too. And I might wind up just using these as like little, um, like little tuck spots in the journal or something like that. But, um, so if you ever find these, the paper ones, it's pretty easy to just pop the, pop the image out. And if you're careful, you can actually take the two pieces apart. Um, but I'm not really going to worry about that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to use it like that because that way you can get two frames. You know, I, I have plenty of them, so I'm not really worried about about that and plus the the back isn't really that exciting you could paint the back i suppose but um and get two frames so so just take some time and pull these apart you know you can save these and use these in like clusters and stuff it, they actually look kind of cool um <clears throat> They're a little bit sharp, you know, so um, I guess they're not that sharp, but they're not pleasant if you hit your, you know, your hand on it or something. Anyway, so I'm just going to take the frame, take the images out of some, some of these. And then, so I'll probably wind up doing a whole bunch of them. Um, and then I'm going to take some Duralar. It's like, uh, archival polyester film, productive covering and alternative work, art, artwork surface for permanent inks and markers. Anyway, this is what it is. I, you can get this at Michael's, I believe. Um, but yeah. I was doing pretty good reading that without my glasses on. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to cut a piece, and you could totally use packaging or like, um, you know, those um, pockets for, oh my God, I'm losing my mind. I can't even think of anything. Um, pocket pages, you know, for albums. Um, okay, so they're two inches, two by two inches. So I need to cut the Duralar so it's slightly smaller than that. So I'm going to cut it at one and three quarters. Let me cut a couple of these strips. This is just going to be my little, like, window. And these little strips I can use on the book plates. So, I was thinking it would be nice, it would be kind of fun to do some of these with the uh, UV resin also. So, I have all three of those stacked up. So I'm just cutting three at a time now um, to use UV resin. But mm, I mean, because that's what I did on, on, on those other ones. 
but I think this is going to look nice. And plus some of the, some of the ones that I did with the UV resin, they actually warped a little bit. So I, you know, I didn't want them to warp. Anyway, so just cutting out, I love cutting out little squares of paper and stuff. This is what I used to do at work all the time when I was, I used to work for Sears in a call center for Sears. And <clears throat> I used to just sit and cut paper for projects. Like a lot. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So I've got those. I'm just kind of prepping these to use with some of that collage. So then I'm just going to glue using the art glitter glue. Carefully, you want to put your glue like kind of far away from the window. Um, because you don't want it to like smear up into the into the window smear and then just place that on there tap it down and this will hold it really well so so now we just have like a little the window glue these up I mean, really, I only need to add like a couple little dots of glue just to just to sort of hold it on for for a minute, like because it's going to get glued again anyways. See the glue smeared. It's not the end of the world. I mean dries clear. You'll still be able to see it a little bit though. Okay. So here's one where I actually ripped the back off. Um, I think, I don't think the other half survived though. So yeah, you just have to use just a skiff of glue. Oh my God. I have glue and paint and crap all over my hands now. Like I'm not even really pushing it down that much. I'm just barely tapping it just to, just to get it on there. I think these would be great as little tuck spots or like I said, or even as like an actual pocket where you know it was stitched or something on three sides or glued on three sides you'd probably have to add something to sort of bring it off the page just a little bit though otherwise I don't think you'd get anything in there there's all kinds of things you can do with these, these little slide frames Um, I will mention again, oops, I got to take the, I got to go get the rice, you guys, just a second. We're eating a lot of rice lately and <laughs> one of the biggest reasons for that is that um, when my son Sammy was going to University of Washington over in Seattle when they closed the school down back in March um, it, they 
some of the students weren't able to leave and they weren't able to leave right away. And so <clears throat> they, since they closed the whole campus, including like the dining hall and stuff, right? They, they delivered to all of the dorms, to each student, three days worth of food and water. And that included um, this 25 pound bag of sushi rice um, because the dorms all have like little kitchenettes in them. So the students can use, you know, they have a stove and stuff in there. But anyway, so what Sammy just went over and got his stuff out of the dorm last weekend and uh, brought home his 25 pound bag of rice. Well, I had already bought a 25 pound bag of rice, so we've got like a ton of rice anyway. So we're going to make some sushi and stuff like that. Okay. So those are glued and then I'll put these in a pile for later. Let's see. So these are dry now. And basically, I'm going to use these metallic type. If you've never used um, Inca Gold or this metallic luster, it's it's a paint, but it's, it's kind of like a wax, right? Um, and it gets super shiny when you buff it. Um, if any, so... The metallic luster is made by deco art. Yeah. Deco art. If you have these and they get, and they dry up, all you have to do is add a little bit of water and they, and they perk right up. So basically what I'm doing, I do this with my finger because it's just the best way to do it. Um, I'm just kind of going over just this, just barely see this one is really dry so it's not working very well um i'm just picking up the texture of that watercolor paper and i think it looks really neat with the with the black background like i don't know it just adds depth I think it just makes it look like old metal, you know, and then that dries and it's, and it's, and it's actually a paint that, that dries, you know? So, um, <clears throat> I, I imagine it probably would, you could probably still activate it with water though, since, you know, it's, that's how you can get it undried out when it's in the little pot my favorite thing to use for this though is this gilder's wax um it just something about it i don't know what it is that's that's in it but it dries like permanent and just whatever kind of uh like solvents in it or something. I don't know. Anyway, I just rub my finger in the little pot and then just barely over the surface. Not really even rubbing it in. I'm just, just barely like scraping across the surface. And I think it, it just looks like old copper, you know, or something. Um, let me try another one of the ink of gold that is not totally dried out. Yeah, here's one. Let's see how this one works. This is the color. It's called Gold Rush. Yeah, works just fine. 
same thing. So, and I, you know, I usually will do the edges too. Finger painting. So yeah, so that's the little frames. And then let me just do the last, last couple of these. I like this silver color. Yeah, this German silver color. It's really pretty. I don't know if you guys can see that very well or not, but the color, but you should be able to see the texture. I took it out, Bastion. Now, I don't know. I think it might be kind of cool to take those and actually clear coat them. So that <clears throat> they just are like sealed, you know, and more permanent. But the Gilder's Paste Wax, is ac it actually does dry permanent. And it's not water soluble. So um, it is coming off of my desk because it wasn't dry yet. But I've had it dry on my desk. And I have to use rubbing alcohol to get it off. So... Anyway, so those are little frames. I may, like I said, I may spray those. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. And I decided I'm not going to spray these covers. I'm just going to leave them natural like this. And so that kind of makes me want to actually spray these and clear coat them a little bit more because I like the, the um, contrast of that, you know, because these will get like really glossy. I don't know. I'll try it and see if I like it with them clear coated or not. But um, if I don't like it, then I just, I won't do it, but you know, I'll do it to a couple and see how they, see how they look anyway. So, but I'm not going to uh, spray these. I decided. Okay, so that's that's that. Now this this guy is dry. Oh boy, this is forty eight minutes already. Okay. So again, I need to cut this down into manageable pieces. I'm actually, I think what I'll do is just fold it in half. And then I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> it's funny. I'm giving out recipes and stuff. Okay. So. So these guys are just going to get use like that you know but before I do that I want to add some more stuff to it and just do like some of the little flowers and stuff like I did on the on the tags yesterday and I want to just use like the little teeny things so here's what I think I might do. I actually want them to be like a little composition sort of 
um, behind that. No, you know what? I'm just going to glue the thin, the little uh, elements on and then and then um kind of line those line up the frames where I like them, you know. I might wind up with some waste from this, but I don't know. I've I've gotten pretty good at using all these little tiny pieces. So, so these are just uh, images from dictionary. Add some of these little mushrooms and this little flower images. kind of all over. We'll do some stamps, some postage stamps, I mean. Is this lazy? This is kind of like a lazy way of, um, I don't know, like mass producing um, embellishments or something. I don't know. It's fun though. I just think it's, I just think it's super fun. I love these, um, these new, these die cuts, these Tim Holtz die cuts. These are the newer ones that I, I talked about them already. Um, <clears throat> and I like that they're a lot thinner than than the um than the other ones that he did what was that like 20 years ago A little pansy I don't think I'm going to stamp any labels on these. I'm just using the art glitter glue now. It's just easier. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to stamp any labels on these because I might actually add a little tiny label on the, like on the frame or something. I don't know. I might, I might not. So see, I'm just trying to get some little images sort of sprinkled across this whole page. Use some more of these little mushrooms that I cut out. And I could add like little bits of um, different pattern papers too. Like, oh, there's a little beetle. Just little remnants of pattern papers maybe, like marbled paper and stuff. I'm going to do some paper marbling, um, take it all outside and as soon as it's nice enough and uh, do a bunch of marbling. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. Oh my gosh, I love all these mushrooms. <clears throat> So then I'm also going to glue the uh, Duralar or, um, you know, whoops, <laughs> totally broke the stem off of that one. Um, whatever kind of clear, like plastic you want to use, overhead projector film or 
um, even just packaging, you know, clear plastic packaging. Um, I'm going to cut those out and use those and cut, cut those out for the, um, for the painted ones too. And then also for the little book plate shapes. So I am doing all of my images, you know, oriented vertically. Um, because my intention is to, uh, you know, use these on little, as a little framed, like collage, like a little tiny, um, framed collage. Need more flowers. Where's the other flowers? Oh, there they are. Oh yeah. See, I even did some little some little roses. I hope this isn't like extremely boring, you guys. Um, but it's like, if, you know, I can create something like this and then this is going to spread out over um, a whole, you know, big project. And it just seems like less work to me, you know? And, and it also, when you're doing like a series of journals, like I normally do, this gives them some continuity too. So, you know, because say you have to do 30 of something or you want to do 30 of something, and you want them to all be kind of similar. Um, it's hard to do that just doing one at a time to completion, right? Because not only will you sort of burn out on it, um, it it's going to change over the process of, you know, making 30 of something. You're, you know, you're going to change the way you do things, you know, and the cons you won't have the consistency. So this is a, a good way to kind of make sure that you maintain consistency too, I think. Just kind of like make all your covers and then, you know, make a bunch of tags that are all kind of in the same sort of, you know, um, style or whatever. I could add some words on these, but I don't, I don't think I want to, um, I need to do, I want to do a lot more images on here, but I think that I will bore you guys to tears if I do that. So, so then basically what I'm going to do is just glue these down onto this page where I'm happy with the image, you know, I'm sorry, guys, let me just zoom in and so you can see exactly. Oh my gosh. Why didn't I do that like 10 years ago? Um, see what I mean? So I can just sort of frame these in and, um, I'm going to just glue them down and that way, um, you know, they'll be sealed all around the edges too. And then just attach them to the, to the cover of a journal or, um, you know, just as a tuck spot. So I think it would be cool to use eyelets to attach these to the edges of pages, you know, anyway, so that's, that's what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep, um, adding little bits all around. Um, I do want to add some postage stamps. I could maybe add some labels. I'll see. I'll see. I don't know. I might. Might not. But I might. Oh, I have a bunch of... Um, oh, somebody wanted me to post 
that, um, oh, I have butterfly postage stamps. That's right. I forgot. I forgot that I got butterfly postage stamps from her. I'll link the Etsy shop where I got the stamps. Okay, you guys. Sorry. Look. Totally forgot I had these. I love postage stamps. And then flower stamps. There's a bunch of flower stamps, too. She must have a lot of patience to sort out that many postage stamps. Anyway. So, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I forgot I had those. Okay, so I'll glue these down, too. And then just, you know, just sort of spread them out all over this whole page. Now, <clears throat> for the book plates, I'm not going to glue them down. Um, because they've got those little, those little, um, pieces that stick out the, the two, you know, connector little circle, half circle things. So I'm not going to glue, I'm not going to just glue these down. Um, what I think I'm going to do, actually, you know, what I think I'm going to do for these is I'm still going to do the acetate or the Duralar, but I have all these little French, uh, flashcards and they just happen to fit perfectly on these. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do for the, for the little book plates is just glue one of these little flashcards on there and that'll be, you know, that'll be good. I'll be happy with that. Um, and I won't add like any other embellishment on that or anything. I think that'll be pretty. So yeah, I think that's how I'm going to take care of those. And then the rest of these, I will glue down using, um, the art glitter glue and it'll hold them pretty well. And I might even go crazy and like do some stitching around the outside of these, just like a, uh, right close to the edge and that'll make them super sturdy. So, okay. So, cause I'm, I'm over an hour already, so I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna, you know, you, you get the idea, right? Um, just, just kind of fill it up with some more images and, you know, you could add words and, you know, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, I even have like all of these little teeny tiny other little, little things. These are from when I was making tiles. So those are just like little flowers and, um, you know, some of the little die cuts, little insects, just, you know, and just kind of fill it in with, with little tiny images and then take your, I mean, so you could just completely randomize it and not even, um, not even line them up, but just glue these on and however they wind up is how they wind up. I don't know if I'm, if I can do that, but like, I think I'm going to want to frame them in like, however I like it. Um, and like I said, I might wind up with some waste, but I feel like I'll probably use those scraps too. So, you know, I don't know. So when I, I'll, I'll do another video, I'll finish doing this and I'll, and I'll, um, and I'll also do this one and then I'll make, I'll just make another video and we'll just kind of continue on this little project. So, okay. And then, um, we'll sort of get the book plates and the, um, the slide frames finished and then we'll move on to something else. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for putting up with me. Okay. Love you. I'm going to eat some chicken and rice. Okay. Bye for now. Love you guys.